Hi there, my name is Craig Gilholm. I am the new general manager at Gospindy Golf Club. I took this job on in January 2022. My role obviously covers looking after all the club's finances and, and budgeting, to end general staff wellbeing and, and making sure the members at the golf club are happy. I think being new in the door, we had the, the whole increase in um, gas for sure and electricity with no caps and such and such. It was all a bit worrying for myself, being fresh-faced at this this, this job. Um, and the club's contracts, we've got about five, six different metres within the club between gas and electricity. And it was like, oh, wow, this is a, a minefield. One particular company grabbed me. Um, the guy was fantastic that I spoke to. Um, and certainly cleared every problem, worries that I had. Um, so, yeah, so it went from there and you know, when you're spending, I think at the time, something for argument's sake, something like 15 pence a kilowatt, and it was jumping up to 60 pence a kilowatt, so, oh my goodness, and not knowing how the club, being new, how the club was maybe potentially wasting money, cook kitchen, gas being used all the time, new boiler systems and that, so, yeah, it was all just a little bit of worrying time, so we had to try and speak to people that had a bit more knowledge on that too get us on the right contract for sure. I had to get new contracts and anything I looked up was like, wow, this is going up tenfold. This is going to be mega money that's not been budgeted for. You know, the budget was set November before I came in and all of a sudden the world changes with the cost of energy and it was like, well, this budget's never going to cover this. Luckily I had, most of my contracts didn't expire until 23, but you still had that worry of, well, where's this going to go, you know? I think it was it was the, the character for me. Um, I was having Paul. I'm sure I'm right in St. Paul. Um, as I say, we had probably six calls a day coming from the, the northeast region. With, within that, I was looking up online comparisons for businesses as well, and, and then all that. So all their phone calls would start to come in because you've been looking up their comparison sites. And Paul, I think at the time they were just. These were just tying up with Scottish Golf, um, or Lothian's Golf, I should say, I think it was Lothian's Golf. So it's always like, well, okay, we've got this other um, broker that deals with a lot of golf clubs from your waste collection to your water to your uh, energy. I thought, right, you know, it's worth getting a couple of quotes just to see. True, we're lucky enough to have a character that played golf, or if not, he's a, certainly a good salesman for sure. <laughs> but no, he, he came across as probably the, the most open. I would say the most open, especially when I asked questions that I wanted simple answers to rather than technical answers to. Yeah, I think at first it was all about the gas and electricity. It was more, look, just give us a simple answer. How much is this going to cost me? Um, and then the range of contracts would come my way. It would be like, well, you can have this contract for this, this contract for that, that contract for that. And so, ah, this is not helping much because I'm thinking this is still going to be a huge cost to me. True looked into the fact that you know, you've got water, water meter as well, and we could probably make some cost savings there as well. And, and true enough, yeah, there's a, a cost saving there as well. And, and, and to be fair, the company that we're with now is, is probably a little bit more transparent with its invoicing and things like that as well. Like, you know, my energy bills were higher last in, in 2023, and there's no getting away from that. The contracts changed. For the first year when one of the contracts changed, it was like, oh, right, there's not enough in the budget for to cover this extra cost, especially because the contract ran out in September and you're getting to the time your heating's going to be on and, you, and, the, and the kitchens are still going to be having to put the gas on, but they're not, spent, they're not selling as much. But obviously that gave me the opportunity to get the proper right budget in place for 2023. True's done for me is open my eyes to, look, this is not going to be cheap. The world is changing. Um, you've got to be more sensible on your approach to energy, um, which it's mo most golf clubs nowadays with geo certification and things like that, they are trying to be more energy efficient and, and, and such, but you're still trying to run a business, you know, and we can't tell how busy it's going to get in certain parts of the day. But for, for me, it's, it's, it's been, they're open enough to be honest enough. Um, I've not had any problems with the guys I've dealt with. Anytime I kind of have, I see something maybe different in the media that say, oh, well, yeah, well, if I've not been in touch, I'll, I'll speak to True and say, no, no, that doesn't affect you at the moment. It's going to be such and such. So I think, I think for me, it's a sort of 
the safeguard of having a company that I can just drop an email to or phone and pull up and say, look, mate, what's going on? I, I need to just get clarification here. I know you are doing well. I know you're with other clubs and that goes, but I'm only thinking about myself at the moment and making sure that people aren't going to question, why are we spending so much on energy when they're spending that amount? At the moment, I've budgeted for what we believe we will use now based on the price increase. Now and again, I'll run that past true and say, look, I'm on the right page here. You guys know this better than me, so, and, and I've not had any wrong answers back yet. <laughs> For the kind of club we are, we, we, we are doing very well from COVID. Um, you know, we've got a, a very long waiting list for new members to join. We've got a very active membership as it is. I think it's trying for me coming in, and my predecessor was the same, he's moved locally as well. We were all trying to bring Cospindy maybe into a more modern world. It's not, it's not that it was ever old fashioned to that point. It was just that it was quite happily moving along at a slow pace. Um, social media came along in 10, 15 years ago and Scottish Open being local with the professional market. Cospindy's Lynx Golf Course. It's going to attract particular overseas golfers, and it does, and social media has helped that no end. And it's not because we've promoted that, it's just social media in general. People come to this area, Americans, Germans, whoever, must play golf spin day. It's a fun golf course, you come and play. So we're doing great. But other golf clubs, I think weather, you know, we can talk global warming, we can talk maybe just a cycle in life. Um, but a lot of the golf courses in Edinburgh and that, they struggle a bit more. There's no waiting list maybe as much. There's shortage of members, visitors or overseas visitors maybe don't go to their clubs as much. So there is differences within the sector of golf, you know. Fundamentally, it will be the rising costs of everything. Food, foods, the kitchen guys, you know. But what do you do? Do you raise the price of your food and people stop buying it? Do you drop the rise of the price of drink to stop buying it? So it's trying to find that balance of what works for your club, I suppose. The majority of golf clubs in the country, although there will be corners of society that believe golf courses fertilise everything, water everything, like overseas golf courses and deserts and things like that. But when you come to a Lynx golf course, if it's been managed properly by the golf course manager, the club manager and such, they're ticking pretty much a lot of the boxes anyway. We, we don't over-fertilise, we don't over-water, we don't go out there spending lavish amounts of money to make things look pretty. You know, it's... Uh, I would say for small corners of the society that believe that golf courses just waste revenue and that, it's not true. You know, we're, we're very, very comfortable with the surroundings and the, and, the, and the nature that lives on the golf course and things like that. And we are conscious that we are part of a sort of nature reserve, if you want. Like, and it is a nature reserve, this golf course, you know, it's got to be. So, nah, we, 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 I think golf courses get a wee bit of a bad rap. We're, you know, we're no like your major football clubs that are seriously spending money on night lights, growing grass and things like that. Golf courses are not quite that bad.